Hello, everyone. All right. Um, by the way, the the intro, like the music, uh, is like way too catchy. <laughs> um, okay, cool. So my name is Justin Willis. Uh, pronouns are he, him. I'm a software engineer at Microsoft. Um, I'm always on Twitter, so that's probably like the best way to get a hold of me. Um, just at Justin Willis ninety six is where you can find me. And let's start. Okay, cool. So today's presentation is going to be um, from starter app to store package with PWA Builder. So I'm going to show you how all of the tools and documentation and that kind of thing that we have on the PWA Builder project um, can help you go from like I don't even have a code base all the way to an app that's on the web and in app stores. Um, so yeah, let's go over what PWA Builder is first. I think that's like kind of key to understanding the rest of the presentation. Um, so PWA Builder is an open source project from Microsoft. Um, it is sponsored by Microsoft. A lot of the team is employees at Microsoft, including myself. Um, but it's not just like a Microsoft only thing. Um, it's completely open source and, and we do everything in the open. Um, these are the kind of, our, our goal is really to help developers build high quality progressive web apps and make that easier, honestly. Um, as you'll see, once we get farther into the, into the um, presentation, uh, building a, a PWA or building anything web nowadays is maybe a little bit harder than it should be. And our goal is to try to, uh, yeah, try to make it as easy as possible. Um, the links you can see on the slides are kind of like all of our different tools that we have um, links to. Um, the first one, pwbuilder.com, is probably the best one to go as our homepage will kind of route you to where you need to go based on like what stage you are in, um, you're in in the development process. Um, and by the way, also on the uh, on the right side of the screen, the the otter in the uh, in like the space costume, um, that's actually our um, our uh, mascot as of recently. <laughs> so I, why is it a space otter? I'm not totally sure. It just it's cool and otters because like we're based in the Pacific Northwest and otters and are cool. So yeah. And first, before I jump in to like Peter Butter and all the cool things we're working on. I did want to give a note on Microsoft Edge. Um, it has been a little while since these things like changed, but I just wanted to give an update on it. Um, so if you didn't know, Microsoft Edge is Chromium based now. So, you know, the same Chromium engine that powers Google Chrome, Samsung Internet, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and yeah, Microsoft is actually one of the largest contributors to Chromium right now. I'm not, not the only contributor by far, obviously, but it is one of the largest contributors to Chromium. Um, it's also cross-platform, so Edge runs not just on Windows anymore. You can install it on Linux and Mac OS, um, and Android for that matter, and even iOS. Um, First-class PWA support, so all the like all the stuff that we've heard about in all in the rest of the talks today, um, and all the stuff that I'm going to be talking about are fully supported in Edge. Um, and as you could see, actually, in the last call, like with the support matrix, our support um, lines up with you know regular Google Chrome support. We also have Edge origin trials, so there's like you know some Edge specific things that we can, we are testing out uh, occasionally, and yeah, we have our own origin trials, and um yeah, the the Edge team and uh, associated teams around like PWAs and the web at Microsoft are all very you know uh, very into pushing the web forward and kind of taking taking things to the next step to where you can build these kind of like uh, you know native feeling or or platform specific feeling um, applications. OK, cool. So I like to start off with documentation. I think documentation, at least for open source projects especially, is like one of the most important parts of the project. Um, and it's also something that has changed recently. So if you've used PDO Better in maybe the past couple of years, you may have seen like our old documentation. Um, but docs.pdobetter.com is our, is our latest and greatest documentation. Um, it has everything that you would need to get started with all of our different tooling. It has guides to like deploying and publishing to the different app stores that we support, Microsoft Store, Google Play, um, MetaQuest, and the iOS App Store, although that is exper experimental support. Um, yeah, and it has even like gotchas and stuff, right? So like say you're going to the Microsoft Store and you run into some kind of like common issue, um, we have uh, like, you know, the common gotchas and then ways to, to fix them. Um, all in here. We even have like an intro to PWAs now. So if you're just trying to get started with PWAs, um, you can you can go to docs.pwbetter.com and we have a PWA overview that you can do that goes through kind of the basics of progressive web apps. And also we are con to all the documentation, by the way, it's also open source. So you can you know help us with the documentation. We get a decent bit of contributions to the documentation. I um, mean, yeah, we're always we're always adding on to it. 
Okay, cool. So I talked about how um, PDWater is an open source project. Of course, it is Microsoft sponsored, as I said, but it is a community driven open source first project. Um, so like I said, everything we do is, is open source. Um, you can come to our GitHub. We actually recently moved to a monorepo. So if you go to like our main repo, you can find all of our tools in there. If you go to the readme, we have kind of all the like, you know, contribution guides and what code base is what, and this kind of thing. I'm really trying to, you know, make this like a community uh, first um, open source project. We also, obviously you can come in and open issues. We have issue templates and feature, feature idea templates and all kinds of things. Um, to really try to make our GitHub like, you know, a, a very um, easy kind of uh, open source project to get into. You can also follow us on Discord. Um, so we have a, a Peter Berry Builder Discord. Um, a lot of the Peter Builder team tries to be on there, including myself. I try to be on there at, at least like half the day every day. Um, and that's a good place to ask questions. We also have on there some community members who are like our um, official like PWA experts on there. And they can also help you um, with anything related to PWAs, PWA Builder, going to the store, that kind of thing. And yeah, if you're looking for, uh, you can also follow us on Twitter, of course, um, twitter.com slash PWA Builder. Um, our Twitter is very active. Um, and yeah, if, you, if you're looking for a project to contribute to, like I said, we're always looking for more contributors. Um, I think any open source project is better when more people um, contribute to it. So yeah, you can get started at our GitHub and just go to the top repo and um, that will kind of get you started and get you into everything. And yeah, like I said, issues, conversations, et cetera. And if you go to our GitHub too, actually you can get the, like the link to our Twitter and that kind of thing too. Okay, so now on to tooling, like the, the fun stuff, right? Um, so we're gonna start off with, so this talk is like about going from, you know, no code to something that is, you know, a full ready to go um, code base. So um, that's, that's, we're shipping to the app stores. So um, we're gonna start off with PWA Starter. So if you've ever used like Create React App or like the Angular CLI or the Vue CLI, um, a lot of these uh, CLIs like Create React App, right? You can do like Create React App New or something like that. And it will give you a new React code base to start off with. Um, same thing with like the Angular CLI. So PWA Starter is the same concept, but done a little bit differently. Um, so it's a it's a code template. It's a code base that's ready to go. Um, it has everything that you need. Um, it is a PWA out of the box, and it has everything you need to you know build a successful progressive web app. It has a service worker, a, a build system, all of the stuff that, that basically you don't want to learn or is or is annoying to learn. And when you really just want to write you know a web application, um, so it comes with all that stuff set up, all the builds and everything. You don't have to worry about that kind of thing. Um, and yeah, it's really about making it easier to build high quality, fast, lightweight applications. Um, and yeah, it's it's at um, PWA Starter. You can get it. So the main way to get it is through GitHub. You can go and we use GitHub template repo. So you just hit the big green button and follow through GitHub, or um, you can uh, get it through our VS Code extension, which I will talk about in just a minute. Goals for the starter and tech stack. Um, so yeah, our goals just like everything with PWA Builder is to make things simpler and easier, right? Um, while keeping a high quality. So the goals for the starter when we were putting together, honestly, you know, talking to web devs and the community and partners, we, you know, as a team kind of started thinking like, okay, what is something we could put together to avoid the normal kind of pitfalls that we've heard and seen in the community um, and with partners? And, um, you know, the, this is kind of what we came together on after, you know, taking in all of this feedback. So the tech stack is lit. Um, so if you don't know what lit is, it's a web components library. Um, if you've used like the Angular CLI or Angular before, all of the components that you are writing are in, you know, Angular components and the PWA starter, all of the components are lit components, but, you know, they just compile down to a web component, basically. Um, we also have a UI toolkit. So we use Shoelace which if you don't know what Shoelace is, Shoelace is an awesome open source collection of web components that gives you, you know, all of the UI components you might want. Tabs, buttons, inputs, um, uh, dividers, all kinds of really, really cool components, uh, color pickers, that kind of thing. Um, for service workers and for like, you know, pre-caching builds and this kind of thing, um, we use Workbox and um, we do have, so it all it gives you at the, you know, at the end is like a normal spa, right? So you can, it's like a normal disk and you can, you know, deploy that disk to any kind of publishing 
you know, uh, any kind of web publishing that you want to. But we do have uh, built-in support for Azure Static Web Apps and GitHub pages. So if you want to go that route, there's some built-in support. But like I said, it, it'll work with um, with any kind of um, publishing process. And you can switch out, like, you don't have to use Shoelace. You can use Material Design and or whatever other kind of, you know, component library you might want to use. OK, cool. So that's the first step. That's the starter. That gives you, like, your code base. So now we're going to be in, like, building a, a progressive web app, right? Um, so this can be our VS Code extension, um, PDO Builder Studio. Basically, it brings the best of PDO Builder into VS Code. Um, you can start a new app, generate manifests, all kinds of stuff. Um, let's go through. So starting a new app, this is going to use the starter and you know generate a whole code base for you, as we just talked about. Um, but write in VS Code. You don't have to go to GitHub. Um, web manifests and service workers. So you can generate those with the um, VS Code extension. Of course, if you're using our starter, it comes with that. Um, but you can generate, um, you know, generate a web manifest in the service worker for a project or site that may not have one already. Um, and it all happens like right in VS Code. And there's also help, right? So as you can see on the left here on the screenshot, um, we do auditing. So I'll show you in a minute, pdobitter.com and the report card page there. But this is more of like a VS Code specific way of like looking at it. So you can check that you have a web manifest, that it's, you know, registered correctly, that you have all kind of the recommended um, fields that we recommend, um, especially for like installation, triggering installation. Um, and same thing with service worker and even publish checklist, right? So you can go and see like, okay, this is the next step that I need to do to publish through the Microsoft Store or this kind of thing. Um, all in VS Code again. And finally, generating icons and screenshots all within VS Code. All you need is just a base um, icon. Um, and then it will generate all of the correct sizes and connect them to your web manifest and all that automatically. <laughs> OK, cool. So now pwbuilder.com. Um, so pwbuilder.com is how you may know PW Builder already if you've used this before. Um, it is kind of, like I said, the entry point to all of our tooling and documentation and, um, and our Discord, Twitter, et cetera. Um, so you can go to pwbuilder.com. And it's basically, um, like I said, it, it's focused around packaging, but it also has a report card that we'll look at in a minute. Um, and yeah, you can, once you, all you need is your URL to your PWA, you put it in, hit a few buttons, and then you can package your app for the app stores. Now I wanna pause here for a second. If you didn't know already, you can deploy a PWA to the app stores. So the Microsoft Store has uh, first class support. It's just like, you know, if you were submitting a UWP or a WinSDK app, um, same thing with the Google Play Store, um, MetaQuest, too. So we, we did some work with Meta on enabling you to um, package up, like if you have a WebXR app, for example, um, you can use PWA Builder to package that app for MetaQuest devices. And we also have experimental support for the um, iOS App Store. It's experimental because of challenges with the web platform on iOS and this kind of thing. But it is something that we've had community members have success with. Again, it is experimental there. OK, the report card. So a whole, like, so you can add your manifest, you can add your service worker and this kind of thing. But how do you know that it's like actually, like you registered it correctly, your service worker is actually working, this kind of thing. Um, PDObutter.com will test your app. So it actually like loads it up in Puppeteer and we do all kinds of stuff. And it will see like, OK, you have a manifest, a service worker, and you have like HTTPS and this kind of thing. You can click in here, and it will give you a lot more information about like which fields you're missing, which fields you might want to add that are optional. Um, and you can see, we make it really easy. Basically, if all the numbers are green, you're ready to go. And again, yeah, packaging. So uh, pdobitter.com is kind of the best place to package, although you can um, access our packaging services through our VS Code extension too. But I wanted to show like the whole, like, you know, you start out with documentation, then you do a code base, then you're building your app in VS Code. And now we have a URL and we want to package it for the app stores. Um, so um, as you can see, like with Windows, for example, um, we actually have a test package that you can generate too. So this just generates an MSIX, which if you don't know Windows, it's like a, uh, like a, a, a package that you can install on Windows, basically. Um, and yeah, this gives you a way to kind of test your PDB way um, and ensure that the PDB way that you submit to the store is going to you know, have the experience that you want. Um, one key thing to know here is that while um, obviously if you install a PWA from Edge, it's going to be powered by Edge, but also all of these store PWAs 
on Windows are also powered by Edge. So really, if you already have a PWA and like you've installed it from the browser, the experience that you're going to get from like that installed PWA from the browser is the same experience that you're going to get from a PWA in the Microsoft Store. However, in the Microsoft Store and like Google Play Store, et cetera, the reason you want to go there is kind of reach, right? So um, PWAs are all about reach. The web is about reach. And by enabling uh, developers to submit their apps to the app stores, that's just another place that users can find your application. And it's kind of cool too, because users who are in, a, in an app store are normally like, you know, looking for an app. So they may actually be a, a kind of a, a way to get more engaged users into your application. So yeah, so that is what I call the PWA Builder platform. Um, so you can see we have tooling and documentation and support for all of the kind of steps of the you know, app development journey, um, starting a new app with our starter project, um, building your app with the help of our PWA Studio or PWA Builder Studio VS Code extension and our docs, of course, um, publishing your app to the web um, with PWA Builder Studio. Um, you can literally just hit a button and like I said, all that kind of built-in support for Azure Static Web Apps will be there and GitHub pages. Um, and yeah, then whenever you're done and you have a URL, if you would like to go to the various app stores, you can you know, submit your URL to pdobutter.com and just follow directions there. And that is how PDOButter supports you through the entire app development journey. OK, so resources. Again, these are all the kind of common links to all of our stuff. Um, like I said, I recommend just going to pwabuilder.com and um, the homepage will lead you to where you want to go. Um, but yeah, that's that's uh, that's PWA Builder. Um, so yeah, let me just check the Discord real quick for questions actually. Um, Um, so yeah, so that's that's it. Um, thank you again. Come check us out on Peter Builder and come to our GitHub if you're looking for a place to contribute. Um, yeah, thank you. See ya.